morning stampers. I'm Meg from Loven Stamps and I have a project today that will help you get ready for Thanksgiving next week um, if you're in the US and celebrating Thanksgiving next week or will help you get ready for Christmas which is still coming <laughs> um, no matter where you are. So uh, two versions of this project that I'm going to show you. It's actually really simple. Um, it's just some cutting and scoring and an easy way to make little table favors uh, for your Thanksgiving or your Christmas table. And we are going to, um, I'm going to show you two stamp set versions of it. One with Marius Moments, which is my feature for Loven Stamps um, perks, points, card kits to go, and tutorials for the month of November. Link in the video description. Or um, also the Pretty Pumpkin stamp set. Oh, that's how I store mine. I band together my dies and my stamps. Um, so Pretty Pumpkins, which is a great one for your Thanksgiving table or fall decorations. And I'm gonna show this one um, with a little touch of the uh, Blackberry Beauty Designer Series paper, which is absolutely beautiful. So um, great things to think about for your Thanksgiving table. And if you haven't gotten your supplies yet for this year, Thanksgiving, then think about next year. It's um, a really pretty paper, actually, I think for all winter long, um, it'll be a nice one. So, all right, you guys ready to get started? Good morning, hey Trish and Kathy and um, Suhan and everybody, and Phyllis, Becky, everybody's like jumping on right now. Um, anyway, the um, getting started part of this is going to be um, a really simple piece of cardstock. Our box is going to be based on um, a four inch tall here by eight and a half inch wide piece of cardstock. And I'm gonna show you, we're gonna stamp it, and then I'm gonna give you some cutting and scoring directions for this. Um, and actually the simplest and speediest way, because assuming you're having a couple people um, for Thanksgiving or for Christmas, you'll want to make several of these all together. So um, I'll give you some sort of speed stamping tips for making the most of those, all right? And yes, happy Friday. Okay, so let's get you guys flipped down this direction. There we go. And um, hey, Kelly, everybody jumping on. Good to see you guys. And there we go. All right, so um, one of the things um, that I will just remind you is that um, when you uh, join my um, Love and Stampfuls demonstrator team, you get access to, to um, the tutorials each month um, just as a perk of being part of my team. So uh, congratulations to new demonstrators. I had a number of people who joined us yesterday. Um, this special is still going on for uh, the um, demonstrator starter kit. So make sure you check that out on my blog over, um, or on my website over at Loven Stamps. So, um, okay, so I have the Real Red ink pad and Real Red cardstock, and I'm gonna go ahead and use um, the poinsettias here from Marius Moments. You've seen a couple projects from me um, with Marius Moments so far um, in the last month, because this is the one I'm featuring for my tutorials right now. And uh, the um, nice thing about this stamp set is that it's got a lot of great pieces in it, um, which can be put together in a variety of different ways to get a whole bunch of different looking project ideas. So, um, or different looking cards and, and treats like the one we're making today. Um, I have a lot of people sometimes who say, oh, I don't know if I am gonna make a lot of cards right now. Um, but they often find that treats are a great thing because they make them for their coworkers or um, for little gifts to take um, places if you're going to see people. Um, so this definitely is a cute treat um, that would be so sweet, like left on people's desks um, around the holidays or things like that. Um, and the nice thing about a stamp set like this is it has lots of pieces that we're gonna mix and match to um, put together to complete a finished project, okay? Um, oh, Jenny, it's good to see you. Uh, hey, Phyllis and everybody. Okay, um, so I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer here and I think I'm gonna move you up, sorry for the shaky there. Um, I'm gonna move you up just a little bit because I wanna make sure you have a good um, view of this whole, whole um, process here. So I'm gonna use my paper trimmer. You can also use your Simply Scored board, um, would work great for this, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and Goodness, it's crooked. I'm gonna go ahead and use um, my trimmer because I can cut and score at the same time. Um, so first thing, paper is four inches by eight and a half inches, and basically we're making a modified version of a 2468 box. So I'm gonna get my cutting blade out of the way, 
and I'm gonna score it the long way at two inches, okay? Then I'm gonna turn it and I'm going to score at two, four, so I'm just moving down the line here, six, and then eight inches, so I have to extend my arm. You could turn it um, and do the scoring sort of from the opposite direction, but I think easier to just open that up. Okay, all right, and then score there. Now, so what I have is basically two little tabs here and then boxes going across. So without moving this now, I'm gonna switch back. I'm gonna drop my um, scoring blade off the end of my track, and I'm going to cut um, along that same line till the center line on my cutter reaches the center score line there, okay? And then I'm gonna go back and do this at each of the um, measurements. So six inches and you can just drop your blade there and then go back down. Um, the blade actually has, it's a little triangle blade and so it has a cutting side on both directions so you can, you can cut both ways. So I'm going back and I'm cutting from the center score to the end on all of those little spots. So when I bend this, you'll be able to see really easily um, kind of what we've gotten there with our two, four, six, eight, okay? You can kind of see how that works. So pretty simple. Um, let's see, I'm losing track of, there we go, comments there. Um, I'm gonna pop this back out of the way, which is super handy. And then let's go back to our box here. Um, I'm gonna grab my paper snips and I'm gonna trim. Now it's really tempting to wanna trim just away that little rectangle like that, but I will tell you um, a really, um, a little bit more professional way to finish the edges of your boxes is to actually cut little wedges off of the corners, little triangles off the corners. So that way, when you fold this tab in, you don't have a little overlap there at the edge, okay? So uh, just a teeny extra little tip, so. All right, um, happy Friday if you're just joining us. So I'm gonna go ahead and take our little box here and I'm gonna flip it over. I stamped the other side because I was stamping earlier, so don't get confused. You don't have to stamp the inside. And I'm looking for my Seal Plus because it is my go-to adhesive for boxes. And for some reason, it is not here. Like, oh my gosh. Oh, there it is. Okay, it was under my tissue paper. Hint, hint, there's tissue paper coming. It's kind of a mess on my counter here. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start off by dropping um, some Seal Plus there um, on the tab, okay? And so then you could try to like assemble this in the middle of the air, but this is not my favorite way. My favorite way is that um, to take advantage of all those straight score lines you made. You know they're straight, so fold your box back. Here's the little tab, there you can kind of see it. And all I'm gonna do is fold the box together flat and match up those um, score lines, and then you know you have um, a square shape that is going to um, go ahead and uh, be just the right shape for you. Okay, so now what I like to do is I like to look at my panels and figure out which one I want to be the front. And I kind of, uh, okay, so I would maybe pick this one, but I don't usually like when my um, seam is exposed to the front. So I'm actually gonna flip it this way um, because I like this set of flowers here. So this is gonna be the front of my box. So this is the one that I'm gonna put the adhesive on. So I'm gonna go left, right, bottom, and then, I'm going to put adhesive here on this last flap and then fold that down at the bottom, okay? So there we have our cute little cube, really simple. Um, I know which one's the front because I've left this nice um, fold line right here at the um, front, okay? And then um, I'm gonna grab a piece of tissue paper. So uh, tissue paper is a really um, great thing. A lot of times I use a small piece of it instead of a um, instead of a big one. Um, so this is cut to just about four inches and I'm going to um, just sort of gather it. So I'm sort of squishing it into my, into my hand here and try to keep the upside up, the edge up. And then I'm gonna take this, let's see, which did I say was the front? I'm gonna take this and pop it into our box here. Now, okay, so pretty cute, right? Really simple. Um, there's the top version, the front version, and coincidentally, not coincidentally, um, size perfectly for Giardelli chocolate squares. So I swear they make these just for um, paper crafting projects. <laughs> so these fit in here, but we clearly need um, a little more decor on here, kind of a fun tag. So I'm gonna bring back in our stamps and a piece of um, basic white cardstock, 
and we're going to um, start adding some stamped images. So I'm going to um, go ahead and stamp one large poinsettia, a small poinsettia. So these are both in real red. And then I'm gonna bring in two different greens. I'm gonna bring in Old Olive, which I think there's a squirrel outside. I'm not sure if you can hear poor Pepper. Uh, really, really wants to go chase a squirrel. And I'm gonna bring in um, Evening Evergreen to get a darker green in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp. We're gonna do two of these. Now, if you're thinking, okay, Meg, that's a really big waste of space there. Why are your images so far apart? Um, I would rather waste a little extra cardstock in between then have my um, images be too close to die cut together okay so I want to die cut them and I need one more image I need the little um, tiny green bit here um, for the center of our poinsettia so now uh, I can bring in our dies so we have our flowers here and um, honestly, if I was, I'm not gonna die cut these because I have them done through the magic of television, but what I would do um, is, and see I still got them just a hair maybe too close, um, but what I would do is go ahead and get these all lined up and then grab a little washi tape and just tape the washi tape down right here on my, um, right here on my uh, project. And that way um, I could easily transfer this to the platform on my Stampin' Cotton Emboss machine um, there we go. And then I know the dies will be in the right place. So um, a quick tip for you when you're trying to do, um, you know, stamp in one place and then move to your die cut machine in the other. So this one's going to go on here. And then I'm going to add one little accent here. This is um, part of the set of dies. Um, there are actually a whole bunch of dies for the other holly and elements and stuff too. So if you're making a ton of this particular project for your holiday table, I might not repeat this same greenery. I might choose to use a holly leaf or a different, um, this little greenery sprig on the other side instead. So, but I'm also going to cut one of these little poinsettias. Um, and so through the magic of television, I have our elements all here ready to go. Okay. So um, let's look at um, kind of putting these together as a tag. I'm gonna go ahead and start layering and I'm gonna pop um, a large Stampin' Dimensional between my layers. Um, when I stamp together like for Stamp Club or, or whatnot, um, everybody's always like, okay, which, which layers have dimensionals, which don't? Um, it's really kind of your personal preference. There's nothing that says a, um, there's nothing that says there's one right answer or not. So um, I generally don't like to get things too tall to the point where um, like there's more dimensional than material there. Um, so depending on your layers. And then finally, when you're attaching little tiny things, um, multi-purpose liquid glue, hands down the way to go. Um, 110755, I order it so often. And then put your glue on your project. Um, and add your layer rather than trying to glue a teeny little piece of paper that then you have to turn over or whatnot. Okay, so there's going to be our flower. And let's see, somebody asked a question. Oh, Sue said perfect size little box. Yes, um, it's essentially a 246H box, which is we've been doing forever as stampers. Um, I can't believe it's almost 20 years that I've been doing this, but I swear a 246A box was one of my first projects. And so... This little cut down version is a perfect height for Giardelli chocolates and Hershey's treasures, which I'll show you in our alternate pumpkin version here in a moment. Okay, <clears throat> so I've given that a second to dry, and now I'm going to go ahead and um, kind of place these things together. But let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and um, work on the next part of our our little favor box here before I before I commit to the sizing on this. So um, I'm gonna add a tag to our greeting, um, or a greeting to our box. Let's see, does this, can you guys see this if I lay it up here? I'll lay it there. Okay, we're gonna add a tag, and so for my greeting, um, I really like the stamp set um, for the greetings also. So we have a joyful Christmas to you and yours, think of you this festive season, and then together is the merriest place to be. So always, of course, store your leftover pieces inside there. Um, so I need this together as the merriest place to be image. And I'm going to um, pop this here. I'm going to peel this stamp off and use this block again. 
Um, if you're looking for fun um, Christmas ideas or stocking stuffers, um, or you're requesting stocking stuffers, um, an extra set of clear blocks is always a really fantastic one. Um, you could never have, okay, literally, I don't think you can have too many. Uh, I just don't think it's possible. So um, then you don't have to peel stuff off, especially when you're remaking a project. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this greeting on here. Um, Together is the merriest place to be. There we go. And then we're gonna pop this in here as sort of a tag and accent the corner, but we need a little bit more um, presence. And so um, also with this stamp and um, folder, the die and folder set, um, are these fabulous large dies to make these large backgrounds, which um, I used on this project that I shared the other day. This is one of the um, card kits to go for the month of November for people who um, order more than $50 in my online store. And so um, I wanted to use not this outline die, but rather the um, rectangle, the stitched rectangle that fits inside here. I love when we make the most of the pieces. Thank you, Stampin' Up! So um, you can run uh, through your cardstock or through your Stampin' Cotton Emboss machine, <clears throat> both of these dies at the same time, like this, and you're gonna get um, the die cut rectangle that we're gonna use for this project. And then um, I figured I might as well just cut one of these because you're gonna use this for something else later. Um, here's a sneak peek of that project actually. Not today's tutorial, but dee -dee -dee, sneak peek. Um, <laughs> coming soon. So that's part of um, tutorials, Love and Stamp monthly tutorials for November also. All right, so um, let's back up here. This is going to be the perfect size here to tuck in the back of our box like this. So this is gonna give us our kind of table favor. And so let's pop on some elements. This one is going to go here with a um, Stampin' Dimensional. We had a debate yesterday about how many. I'm just using one, but you could use more. Uh, for those of you who are more comfortable, avoid the wobble, someone said. Um, and I'm going to then um, decorate the edges here. So let's kind of practice our placement, um, looking at these elements here, kind of like this, um, getting our flower in here, and then green in the background. Okay, I like this. Now, um, I, like I said, <clears throat> when I'm attaching pieces, I really like to use multi-purpose liquid glue. I wanna make sure I get the glue in the um, part that's gonna contact the um, layer underneath. I don't really want the glue in empty space because uh, this glue has a tendency to stay sticky. Um, so I don't want the glue to overlap so that when people are trying to pick up their, um, their little treats, they're getting uh, sticky on their fingers. And then I'm gonna pop a Stampin' Dimensional on here so that I don't have to worry about the placement. Um, I can just put our flower on where we want it. And then um, this little guy is gonna go under here. So I'm gonna pop a little more um, greenery in here. And a little like flower arranging, um, you can kind of uh, layer your elements, tuck stuff in the back um, and so forth. And then, uh, oh, I think we need another little gold accent. What do you guys think? So here's this. Hello to our Oregon stampers. <laughs> it's early morning there. I hope you guys have your coffee. So here we're kind of moving around, moving along on our little tag tree, our little table favor. Um, and I have a, a Thanksgiving version to show you too, so hang on for that. But before we get there, I do want to bring in um, the gold holly leaves, which are part of the, um, the supply list for my uh, projects in November. Um, I really like to curate a set of supplies that can go together to make um, some fantastic, uh, some fantastic things sort of as an ensemble. And so um, this set of supplies includes the holly leaves and Stampin' Blends. So these are pretty as gold. Um, they are, you know, a nice um, extra accent there with like some extra little glitz. But I kind of want them to be a little bit um, more in line color-wise. So I'm going to use the dark of the Evening Evergreen Stampin' Blends marker and color right on this holly leaf. Um, so one of the great things about Stampin' Blends is that they can be used to color things that um, would not necessarily accept ink. So things, um, they're alcohol based, so their um, solvent dries and then um, sticks on uh, shiny surfaces pretty well. So things like metallic um, cardstock, hint, hint, 
Um, we'll be showing this one next week. <laughs> um, and then um, other things like holly leaves. So, all right, and I grabbed my uh, mini glue dots because I find that the holly leaves don't love to stick with glue very speedily. And so I'm gonna pop this one kind of down here. Did I get the, the glue? Okay, oh, there it is. I didn't know what happened to the <laughs> glue dot. Apparently holly leaves don't like to stick with lots of glues. Um, there we go, okay, stuck down. And then one more, and these are, um, the glue dots are a little bit big, so I often roll them up like little mini tacos, um, little mini taquitos or whatever, um, because that will um, give you a little bit less surface area, so it's better size for your project, okay? So here is our very pretty tag. Now you could, um, of course, take like a little tiny, um, little tiny piece of cardstock and you could, you know, write um, a message on there or write like a, um, a place name or something if you wanted this to be for, you know, mom or Aunt Char or whoever. Um, but uh, then this just tucks inside here with a little candy and you have your sweet little um, table favor. All right, and then there you go. There we go. Now you can see the whole greeting. Mary, together is the merriest place to be. But I promised you guys a Thanksgiving version, so. Let's set that one aside and bring in our um, one of my favorite Thanksgiving -y fall sets, um, Pretty Pumpkins. So this one um, comes into play uh, so easily when you're starting with like Halloween things or fall things or pretty leaf things, and then um, has a set of fantastic dies that coordinate with it. Um, here they are, and I've shown some projects with this in the past. And did I find them before we got started this morning? Uh, no, I didn't. So <laughs> you can look back on my blog. Actually, in the video description, I've linked a project um, that is features um, the element that I'm gonna show because I've told you guys before, um, when I stamp extra elements that I don't use, I always just tuck them in my stamp case. Um, so they're in here. Like these are some pumpkins from some um, things that I started and didn't finish or didn't need. And some extra little um, rose gold and so forth um, leaves. And so um, I actually pulled out the pieces for today's project just from my, my pieces in my bin. So this one um, is here. It's done in Cajun Craze and um, with the Blackberry um, Beauty Designer Series Paper Accents. So let me show you the pieces. So the pumpkin here in the background is one that I did for a card and I showed how to do this um, sort of blended ombre technique, the link's in the video description to go back and look at that project. Um, and so I had this in my stash and I just pulled it out. So you can see kind of the similarities here between our two projects. Um, so here's another version of the tag. Okay, so same layout. Um, and I just used a different greeting from the Merriest Moments stamp. So um, thinking of you this festive season. So if if you were gonna, you know, you could give gift this to somebody, it wouldn't have to be necessarily um, on your table. Um, and then sort of the same accent here at the outside and that same um, rectangle of brushed metallic cardstock. Um, but this one, um, so I've used this, this die cut pumpkin and then this die cut pumpkin here is the one that I used um, to make that background pumpkin there out of the, um, the foiled designer series paper, so pretty. And the colors for this are Cajun Craze and Blackberry Bliss. And then um, the rose gold paper, um, I actually, this is the gold from the gold and rose gold um, cardstock in the annual catalog. And so I had these little pumpkin leaves and they're from um, the same pumpkin die set here too. And again, one of those fantastic dies where they include multiples of a single item so that you don't have to keep cutting over and over and again, you just die cut them all at the same time, so. All right, and then um, let's see, this one has five Hershey's nuggets in it. So um, if you need to kind of plan out how many nuggets you're gonna need for your gifts or your table mates or whatever. And the um, these were, I think fall, I don't know if they're fall or just the always. So this one is, what, what kind is this? Oh, the toffee and almond kind. Um, so I, I don't know if they're seasonal, but it is perfect that they are so color coordinated with our fall um, tablescape kind of decor idea, okay? So, there are two holiday table versions of our same um, 
same project and give you um, lots of ideas. You know, you could remake these for any occasion, a birthday. Um, you could put balloons on the little corner. Um, you, they could be favors for a wedding or favors for a baby shower, um, all kinds of great possibilities. But really, um, however you decorate them, they are kind of a fun little treat to, here, I'll show them up, there we go. Kind of a fun little treat to um, make the most of your um, supplies and doing something that's, you know, maybe not just a card, so. All right, um, cutting and scoring directions, I've given you um, pretty much in the video, but if you are a person who loves the idea of having everything easily printed out in a PDF um, or on your computer, the tutorials for uh, this project um, with photos and cutting directions and so forth are available for free as my thank you to you in November if you place an order in my um, online store. Uh, but they are also available on my Etsy shop, uh, which is Loven Stamps Card Mart. And you can download um, the PDF from there, purchase and download the PDF from there um, if you're not placing an order with me this month. So, uh, Or sign up to be a demonstrator um, on my Loven Stamps team and you get my monthly tutorials then also. So um, I'm so excited. I'm glad you guys really like this project and uh, I hope that it will grace, um, grace some of your tables this season. Uh, let's see, Sue says she's planning to make them. It's on our list now. Um, Leslie says, oh, <clears throat> uh, sorry, <laughs> touched the wrong thing there. Um, Leslie said she's been looking for the chocolates. Yeah, <clears throat> um, I do really love um, these. I'm, I'm a fall color girl all together, so I do really love these um, colors of the Hershey's Nuggets. They're just, I think the bags from Sam's Club or Costco, it's just their standard color size, so, or color spectrum. They might be coming out with Christmas soon though, so if you are looking for, I totally buy my candy by the color of the packaging, not really what's included, so, you know, you get what you get. Uh, it just happened to be in your treat because it was the right color for the project I was making. So anyway, um, good that we have lots of choices. Giardelli, uh, or, um, what are the little balls with the wrappers? Ah, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. The balls of, they're often filled with like a liqueur or just like a flavor inside. It's a chocolate. Um, they come in every color. What are those things called? Oh, all right. Well, somebody will leave it in. Linden, Linden. Yes, the Linden little chocolate balls. They come in Lindor, Lindor chocolates. They come in every color. And so you can always get whatever you need to match your project. Who cares what's inside the wrapper? It's the pretty part that matters. Oh, lint. Okay, well, whatever they're called, something along those lines of names. So thanks guys for filling us in. And I wish you a very um, happy weekend and I'll see you a couple days uh, next week for Maker Mornings with Meg. So happy stamping guys, take care.